After a tectonic event like an earthquake, a country will need to respond to help its population. These will be both immediate responses and long-term responses. And we're going to look at both of these today in this video. An immediate response is, as it sounds, reacting immediately to the event. This usually includes search and rescue along with helping survivors, providing food, water, shelter and medical care. Longer term responses start later and are aimed at getting people back to their normal lives, rebuilding roads and housing and looking at how to reduce any further risks. In the previous video we looked at the primary effects and the secondary effects of an earthquake in both Chile and Nepal. Well now we need to look at the immediate responses and the longer term responses and see how they compare and contrast in these two different places. In exams you often see these two terms, compare and contrast. Compare means what are the similarities, whereas contrast means what are the differences. The responses differ slightly between Chile and Nepal. Chile has frequent earthquakes, so the government was prepared and knew how to respond quickly. They also had money available to help with the responses. In contrast, Nepal doesn't suffer frequent earthquakes, so there were very few preparations made. Well, let's look at the immediate responses first. In Chile, the emergency services acted quickly and international help supplied them with field hospitals, satellite phones and even floating bridges. Within 24 hours, temporary repairs were made to the Route 5 and North-South Highway. This helped aid to be transported from Santiago to the affected areas. Power and water were restored to 90% of homes within 10 days. A national appeal raised $60 million. This was enough to build 30,000 small emergency shelters. In Nepal, search and rescue teams, water and medical support arrived from other countries such as the UK, India and China. Helicopters were used to rescue people caught in avalanches on Mount Everest. They also delivered supplies to villages cut off by landslides. Half a million tents were needed to provide shelter for the homeless. Financial aid was pledged from many countries. Hospitals were overcrowded, so field hospitals were set up to support. 300,000 people migrated from Kathmandu looking for shelter and support with family and friends. Social media was used to help search and rescue operations. Now let's look at the longer term responses to these events. Chile's government launched a housing reconstruction plan a month after the earthquake in order to help nearly 200,000 households who were affected by the earthquake. Chile has a strong economy, mainly based on copper exports, and this could be rebuilt without much foreign aid. Even so, the president announced it could take around four years for Chile to recover fully from the damage to its infrastructure. In Nepal, roads were repaired and landslides were cleared. Temporary lakes were emptied to avoid flooding. Thousands of homeless people needed to be rehoused and damaged homes repaired as well as 7,000 schools that needed to be rebuilt or repaired. Much stricter controls on building codes were introduced. In June 2015, Nepal sought technical and financial support from other countries by hosting an international conference to discuss reconstruction. Tourism is a major source of income, so by July 2015 some heritage sites were reopened and tourists started to return. Repairs to Everest Base Camp and trekking routes were made. By August 2015, new routes had been established and the mountain reopened for climbers. Both immediate and long-term responses have to be considered by any country that experiences a tectonic hazard event. Music